Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. We are now at book six, which, well, movie six, but book six is probably my favorite of the books. Super excited to dive into this one. Which is your favorite? Let's talk about it in the comments. Did you know, sir, then? Did I know? I just met the most dangerous dark wizard of all time. No. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. And this is our retro review for Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Spoilers ahead. Lots, and maybe even some for like, you know, movie seven and eight because I can't really help myself. I know, I, because it's all go, so good together. So I have to say, in terms of the books, I think Half-Blood Prince is my favorite. Oh, it's definitely because up there for me when now. I was dating you and you made me read all of the books, like... Coming out of book five, 800 pages of Harry whining. And then That's getting, a rough book. That was rough. Getting into book six, which was this dark and this intense. I mean, when you get to the Infurious, Inferize, okay. what are they? It's spelled Infurious, so the Infurious. Okay. And so I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. They don't really say it in the book or in the movie how to pronounce it. Like, it's very quick. Well, so. the living dead yeah. zombies yeah. that come out of the water. There you book. go. Like, the scene in the book was so intense, and I remember reading it at night going, oh, crap, I have to go to sleep now. Yes. Like, that was, ah. Oh. So I really loved the book, and I have to say I was not disappointed in the movie when I made the transition. Mm, no, see, I, it's not that I wasn't disappointed in the movie, but the Infurious were not as scary or creepy as I would have liked I will to say that's been. true. Yeah, the book I, is, the description is intense. It is, it is really intense and you see it for more, but I understand why they did it the way they did with the movie and it worked really well with the movie. Yeah. So overall, what are your thoughts about this movie? What did you think watching it so, again recently? Overall, I really enjoyed it. But one of the things that I wish they would have done more of is talk about the Horcruxes more. Um, mainly in the book, Harry meets with Dumbledore a lot more often than they show in the movie, which I know would have added more time. But if they talk about like, I mean, even if Dumbledore would have said something simple like, oh, I guarantee like Voldemort wouldn't have used any commonplace object, which he did say that, but he's like, but he would have used something grand. He always wanted to be at Hogwarts. He always wanted this. And it's like, he always, the, the, you know, the house, different houses. So it's like, and he mentioned Hufflepuff's cup and he had a memory that kind of went with it that Harry watched and and so and so it's been so long since I read it I haven't read it in probably like three years but I remember that and I remember thinking I'm like so then we get into the seventh movie and I feel like in the movie Harry's not as um as well versed or have as good of an idea as he did in the book. It worked in the movie just yeah. fine. But for me, that was a huge missing point in the movie. Yeah. But just, other than that, I loved it. Just to take more time learning Horcruxes when he figured out the memory that, you know, that's what yes. Tom... Which, okay, so oh. speaking of that, what? Oh, I have one other thing that irritated me too. Oh, go ahead. In the movie, um, or in the book, Dumbledore freezes Harry. Hide yourself below, Harry. Speak or be seen by anybody without my permission. Right before he gets killed, because he knows Harry would intervene. And he just tells Harry to stay out of sight. Yes. And I don't think Harry would have done nothing. I really, I have a hard time yeah. thinking he would have done nothing. And it was more powerful in the book to have Dumbledore say, put on the... the yeah, he had him in his invisibility cloak and, then, and he froze And then he him. did the spell Malfoy did on him at the beginning that yes. froze him when Malfoy yes, broke his nose. Yes, and what was cool in the book about that is he froze him and then that's when Malfoy disarmed him because you know Dumbledore would not be disarmed by Malfoy. But Dumbledore chose to save Harry instead. Yes. Yeah, so there were definitely moments in the book that may have been a bit more powerful, but yes, and that and but the movie was still phenomenal. Yeah, it really was. One of my favorite it's... things in this movie was, you know, okay, so we go to the last movie and number five, where Dumbledore is thinking he's protecting Harry by cutting him off, yes, and realizing, well, Harry likes to break every dang rule, so by cutting him off, I've made everything about. A hundred million he times He cuts worse. him off for other reasons. In I five. know, He doesn't I want know. Voldemort to know they have a connection. But it was really cool that in this one, he just really like, look, we have a connection. We're going to connect. Yes. And so it was really cool the way that Dumbledore was walking him through the memories of Tom Riddle. And mm -hmm. I loved every time we flash back to Tom Riddle because I like mm -hmm. the shade of green that they would just put over oh, the yeah. screen. And so like everything had this like green tint to it. But everything about it was so... Creepy in my favorite scene with Tom Riddle. Oh, and the kid they picked for Tom. Oh Riddle. gosh! I mean, for both. I mean, there's more than one kid, but both times, 
perfect candle. Well, I think my favorite scene has to be when Dumbledore is meeting Tom Little for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like that whole scene, and the Dumbledore is about to walk out. I talk to snakes. They find me. Whisper things. Is that normal for someone like me? It creeped out Dumbledore to no end. And I get it, because the the tone that that kid was talking at mm -hmm. and the way that he was saying it, it was just freaking creepy. I mean, that's the stuff that a good horror film is made out yeah. of. And so, like, that was all really cool, and I loved it. And I loved the fake memory with um, Professor... Slughorn. Slughorn. Gosh, I'm so bad at names. With Professor Slughorn and with uh, Tom Riddle, like, all that stuff was so mm -hmm. good. And just the way it was shot, the way they messed with the audio when it's the bad memory and mm -hmm. you don't hear what he when wants. When it's the, like, yeah, altered memory. Yes. Yeah, so I thought all of that was really, really cool. I agree. And we were talking about this earlier. Dumbledore. Yes! Was finally felt, I mean, he still wasn't perfect compared to the books, but this is where... Um, I cannot remember the name of the actor, but Michael this, Gambon, I thank believe. You. Yeah, this is when I felt like he filled in the shoes of Dumbledore much more I than agree. any of the other movies. You know, at times, I forget how much you've grown. At times, I still see the small boy from the cupboard. And he was much more of a main character in this movie yeah. too, because it goes from him and Harry going and finding Horcruxes, well, just the one, and then it goes to them meeting one on one, and then at the end when he dies, it's just you have to feel connected you do. to Dumbledore. So when, because I remember, I, I shed a tear in the books when he died. I did. I didn't know he was gonna die when I was reading. The yeah, book. I didn't tell you, and so <laughs> I'm like, so I didn't know he was gonna die, and so and I. I will see in the movie, I didn't feel like I needed to shed a tear for him, but I was more connected to him than any of the previous movies with this Dumbledore. See, that connection started for me in movie five, because mm -hmm. I felt like movie five is where he started. Oh, he was perfect for that, because that's yeah. how he needed to be aloof and distant. Yeah, but so. he also carried that confidence that I get when I read the book. That yeah. confidence that I like that Richard Harris, it's different than what Richard Harris did, and I think I still prefer Richard Harris. No, I know I still do. Yeah. But I just feel like as far as this actor's portrayal, I feel like by the time we get to movie five, it's like, there it is. That's Dumbledore, and that's more how I see him in the books, and it was even more so in six, which, as you just said, was incredibly important because mm -hmm. I remember reading the book and when he said, serious, please, the way it's described in the book, it's like... Severus, it, please. But when he says, Severus, please, the way it was described in the book... It sounded like he was begging him. like, yes. and it, But it sounded like he was begging him in a way that he didn't want to be killed. But we learned differently in yes. book seven. In book seven, we learned it was like him saying, don't let don't, Malfoy... Do not split. let anybody yes. else do this to me. It has to be you. But that was that to me came through in the movie. The way he said Severus. Severus. Please. I could get it both ways. Like and, I could and you see. could see Severus looked at him and he's like, all right. He's like, that's him t telling oh, me. Oh, what a cadaver. Time. Oh my like, gosh. He didn't even think about it. He's like, Psh, done. Yes. In the book, you can tell he was hesitant because he, I honestly believe, he loved and respected Dumbledore. We're certain he respected yeah. him. Yeah. I'm the half blood prince. You know, we haven't talked about Professor Snape a ton. No. But Alan Rickman is amazing um, in that role of Professor Snape. Yes. And I loved He's exactly him. exactly what you picture in the yes. book. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, to to the nth degree, mm -hmm. he is Snape. Yes. Like, I mean, oh, it's just amazing what he brought to that role. And then watching him in this one is just incredible. All the way from the unbreakable vow mm -hmm. that he makes at the beginning with the Malfoy mother. Yes. And how he makes that vow to protect Malfoy. And you can just tell, like, he cares about Malfoy. So, of course, he's going to protect yeah. Malfoy. But but now he's oh, got to figure out. I can only imagine how conflicted he is because these are family to yes. him in a way. And but he's on the opposite side. Yeah, he's not gonna. He killed, really, he only, he's only on the opposite side because they killed Lily. Well, I maybe. mean that's the only reason. But he's turned to love those people too. Yeah, but it's it's just cool because it's like it's that hindsight that we know we know he's a double agent that mm -hmm. he is not working for the Dark Lord, but he's that double but agent. But he could be. He could be, and they do a good job making you believe he could be, but that's what's so awesome about it. So, like, I just loved his performance throughout the whole thing in that moment where he killed Dumbledore up there on that tower. Like you said, it's like he had to rip the Band-Aid off, so he just did it. But I feel like I heard a tone in his voice where he said it. Like, there's a, it's very slight, yeah. and it's very quick, but there is a tone in his voice that it's like, oh, he doesn't want to do that. And then I love it again where Snape is like, 
out in the field with the Death Eaters as they're leaving the school, and Harry yeah, is so they running. Can away. Oh my gosh, that scene where Harry is chasing after Come and face me, you yeah. coward! Like to me, that was like one of the greatest moments, and, and I love that with Harry. Mm -hmm. You know, like I like I know he's being kind of immature in this moment, and I know he's just coming in this out of anger, but the courage it takes to chase a herd of Death Eaters. Yeah, and he didn't even care about the herd, he wanted Snape. Yes. But then, and then he goes to do the spell that Snape wrote in the Half-Blood Prince, and then Snape just turns around, you think you could use my own spell against yeah. me? Well, and one of the things they talk about in the book is in year six, they're learning how to cast spells without using words. Like how to use it through their mind or however, you know, they cast yeah. spells. And so one of the things that Snape says, he's like, hmm, oh, Potter, you know, didn't, <laughs> like another thing you didn't learn how to do, because he does not love Potter. We know that. I know I said later that he was turned to love him, but I just really meant. Well, he Snape turned to love Dumbledore, Dumbledore and yeah. love Potter in so far as it's not, Lily's son. It just loved his eyes. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but it's like, he, he, you know, another thing where he's like, oh, Potter, you kind of like, you're a slacker. Didn't learn how to do that this year, did you? Well, honestly, Harry is a little bit of a slacker. He never kept up his occlumency. Oh yeah, no. You that know to keep to keep to you keep know Voldemort, Voldemort out of his head, which, which is, is why Sirius is dead. Yes. Oh yeah, and that's 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 for another review. That's what another. You're yeah, well, I, yes, yes, that's for a different movie <laughs> and know, another review. Sorry, sorry, I know exactly what seven. you're talking yes. about. It's movie seven, not movie six. But I loved that scene and. One of the things I loved is how Bellatrix goes to kill Harry right there in that moment, and Harry would have died. But see, we have this hindsight, and we know Snape is protecting the good guys, and so we know when he says, no, he belongs to the Dark Lord, that that was a great cover, but in truth, he was protecting Harry Yeah, Potter. but in truth, he belongs to the Dark Lord. No, I know that, As I say, Voldemort doesn't want anybody else killing Harry but, after what happened in movie four. I know, but I feel the double... And whatever. I feel the double meaning yeah. behind that. Well, there. yeah, because he was protecting him because he knows the only one who can probably defeat Voldemort is Harry. Yes. And so, like, I just thought that was an incredibly little interesting thing there. So, like, ah. And then that scene where everybody holds their wands up and they all glow and it gets rid get of the rid death of mark. The, yeah. Oh, man. Like, is it death mark or is it dark mark? Dark mark, death I, mark. Whatever. I'm it's just meaning the mark they put in the sky yeah. when they kill somebody. It was just so cool when they lifted up their wands and it just blew that thing away. Like, yeah. Ah, oh, the and death of Dumbledore. To me, but it's, it's hokey, yeah. but who cares? That's what people do in the magical realm in real life I when know, a powerful well, wizard dies. It's just reality. In real life. In real life. I really liked Professor Slughorn. They picked the perfect actor to play him. I thought he did well, but I I pictured him to be different in the books. So, but I I easily accepted the actor that they chose. Well, I just I even love every time he talks to Ron, it's hello Wallumby. Yeah. Like it's just I mean, everything. And I feel like he's constantly slightly drunk the way that he oh, talks. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know. he is a potions master That's now. true. He is a potions master. But anyway. Oh, and just, okay, keep going. And I've got one other thing to talk about. Oh, go ahead. Oh, my gosh. So Snape is in charge of Defense Against the Dark right. Arts class. Did we ever see him teach? No. That, that would have been was, awesome to see Snape teach the Dark Arts class. That was something else that yeah. I think was desperately missing desperately missing that was that was a missed opportunity yep but the thing that i loved about slughorn is is like you know so he's got the half-blood prince book which it's funny how the movie's called the half-blood prince and yet you know the book's just sort of there and helps him but that's about it yeah <laughs> but anyway it was really cool how he wins the liquid luck mm -hmm. and i loved how he used it with ron and oh, like how he faked it. Made Ron believe that he drank the liquid luck, so he so did Ron, incredibly like, good in the Quidditch, Quidditch tryouts. Yeah. And it's like, see, the power of Not tryouts, of the their first match. Oh, yeah, the placebo effect. It's yeah. amazing Hermione, how that works. Hermione uh, did a Cofundus charm on Cormac. Oh, my gosh, Cormac was perfect also. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> but like, so I th and then when Harry actually drinks the liquid luck, mm -hmm. and, and he's like half drunk. I've got a really good feeling about Hagrid's. I feel it's, it's the place to be tonight. Do you know what I mean? No. I mean, I don't know what oh it is, God. When but he comes he's up, freaking he's like, hilarious. He's like, okay, Slugger, I'm going to Hagrid's. <laughs> and it's like, and he just goes, da, 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 and like when he's talking about Aragog, maybe the, you know, that part cracks me up in the movie that every time. All of that was so good. But then when they had to bring it down and talk about the goldfish that was wonderful magic given to Slughorn by Lily mm -hmm. and it disappeared the day she they died. They turned from that happy to that sad. Yes. Really and even fast, though, but well. And even though Harry is still a little, I guess, half drunkish. Yeah, it's, it. it's starting to fade. It tones it down so that they can have this serious conversation mm -hmm. and it can have impact. So really, 
All that to say that as a whole, this movie had a really good dark tone with really great light moments, mm -hmm. really great characterizations, great build-ups with uh, Snape and Dumbledore, and it was brilliant what they did with those characters. Mm -hmm. Amazing to watch Malfoy conflicted. I mean, I don't know. If I keep going, we could do an eight-hour video. But Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, once we get here and, and these series are starting to get a bit more darker and a bit more mature, like, I'm just... I'm really liking it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the sixth movie is a really good one. I agree. All right. Well, we're holding back our final ratings till we do our rankings, which yes. we will do after Fantastic Beast 2, and we'll rank all of the wonderful Wizarding World worst to best. So Sounds like a plan. That is going to be the hardest thing so in the hard. world. For me, I'm going to have to try to do it without comparing them to the books. Just movies by themselves. Yes. That will be a struggle, but we'll get it done. So the question is, did you like Year 6? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian, and hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified for our next Harry Potter review, Fantastic Beast review, and all the other stuff we got going on here. I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. Thanks for checking out Durbanian. Durbanian.